Hey guys, it's Troy, and guess what? It's pen mail day yet again. Wanted to share with you a couple of things that I had picked up, and uh, some may interest you, and some just kind of tips for uh, what you may want to add to your collection as far as tools um, and maintenance supplies. So, um, also, the pens I'm going to show you today, my two favorite brands, both vintage. So, uh, let me share with you one of the things, or actually two of the things I got. Uh, when you're cleaning up pens, and you're, uh, especially if you're looking for old vintage pens, and you're cleaning out barrels uh, that have like sack residue, um, or even you're trying to get out some stubborn ink out of some barrels, uh, some small test tube brushes uh, might be in order. I've been meaning to order some of these for a while, and I just happened to be ordering something from uh, a vendor who had these in stock and it was one of those add-on items that as long as I'm buying this other stuff I might as well just chuck these into my order and so those ordered uh, ordered and were received uh, got those today in my pen order so along with that same order I got this uh, this uh, is just a clear acrylic block but it's it's made for nibs uh, it's uh, a nib burnishing block and uh, occasionally I'll get a nib that is bent and basically it's useless to me because uh, I, I mean I can try to play with it um, I've got some nibs that are just out of shape uh, or, or, or you know bent down or bent sideways that kind of thing and uh, this is meant to be able to, to work on that so you've got a, uh, a convex taper down cone to lay a nib over and I've got a concave one identically on this side over here uh, so the whole idea is I mean it's a little more expensive than I, I like but uh, the whole idea though is to be able to set your nib in and use a burnishing tool uh, they did not sell the burnishing tool so I picked one up that also arrived today uh, oddly enough and uh, the idea is to be able to, to work with that nib inside of this yeah, in, inside of here or on the outside to try to bring a nib back into shape. I personally have never done it before, so this is something I purchased. It's about 25 bucks for this acrylic block, but I figured, what the heck, as long as I'm placing a good size order, I might as well just go ahead and add it on, because it's something I've been eyeballing for a while and been wanting just to have the experience and to practice and play with it so I can learn, get better at it, pick up a few more skills, and, uh, and work on a few nibs that I've got that are bent. Uh, so I figure, what have I got to lose? All right. So uh, those are some of the uh, the add-ons to my order and a separate uh, order. You know, I picked this up just for like five bucks on eBay. Uh, so you know, not a bad deal. So let's talk about my order. A uh, couple of different orders that showed up today. My two favorite brands. I got uh, this particular pen today. It's a vintage Waterman. It's from the 1940s, and quite honestly, uh, the seller had no idea what model it was. I can tell you it is made in the USA. It's got a very light, very worn imprint still here on the barrel. It's, uh, you know, its finish is kind of tarnished. It's in rough shape. Uh, you see it exactly as I got it. I can tell you too. I'm going to have to rework uh, it. I'm going to have because, uh, let's see, listen to this. Yeah, so that sack is toast. Now, normally, um, you know, uh, when I first got started playing with pens, I'd get upset about that. Actually, I was kind of hoping it would have a calcified sack in it so I can replace it. And for the fourth time, I'll try filming one <laughs> sack replacement and show you uh, guys, because I've had numerous requests on how to do that. Uh, maybe I can give show you a sack replacement on this old Waterman from the 1940s. You know, I, like I said, he didn't know what model it was, didn't say what model it was. It, this is a stalwart here, and it's the closest thing I've got uh, to what this might be. Um, uh, well, I've got an M2 as well, and, or a W2, I think. Uh, and it um, is the same length as a stalwart. Uh, there, is, there are some lady-style pens from that same era and same general shape, but the one I found that looks the most like this one is a starlet, so I'm not really sure. I'm going to show you the nib here too, and one of the things that you can probably cannot tell about this particular nib. Well, number one, it's in rough shape, so it's uh, I'm going to have to knock that nib out, play with it. Uh, but you, I could only see it under a jeweler's loop, taking a look at the tip. But that tip is actually broken, so 
I checked again on the listing and the pictures that were um, on eBay where I picked this up and it, you couldn't tell from the pictures that it had one of the tines snapped off at the tipping material so essentially much like my fingers you know, you've got one shorter than the other because that tipping material you know it's so small at the end you essentially have a snap off here and uh, you have the, the length uh, continuing on to the tip of one of the tines so I've got one snapped off tine right next to a regular tine and what I'm probably going to do is for the first time ever just so I just because what have I got to lose because it's a broken nib I can't fault the seller because unless you put that under a microscope you or a, or a, a loop you weren't going to see that because I, I held, held it up looked at it to the naked eye I can't really tell the difference but looking at it under a jeweler's loop I can see that deal so I'm probably gonna try for the first time ever maybe some nib grinding and try to make it into a stub uh, and grind that off never done it before I figure what the heck what have I got to lose so anyway um, that's a new project pen a new uh, new to me 1940s uh, waterman so I'll be playing with that now shaver snorkels I've got a couple of pens that have a uh, snorkel um, there are people who collect snorkels. I know some guys who like to get like one of every color or every model and every color out there. I'm not that kind of collector, um, but um, you know I appreciate those that do uh, try to get a full set. I mean that's to me pretty cool. But this is the first snorkel, and I realize that cap doesn't match uh, the the barrel. Uh, but you know I, I've shared this with you before. So a Schaefer snorkel. You know you see why they call it a snorkel? All right. Well. That snorkel device uh, was pretty common in the 1950s when Schaefer made a very complicated pen, a uh, very good working pen, and the, the PFM, pens for men, same kind of idea. Basically, it's a fat Schaefer snorkel and uh, with a very different nib, though. If you look, it's got that inlaid nib as opposed to a traditional style or a Triumph style nib. So, I love the PFM. Um, I wish this one had a medium instead of a fine uh, nib to it and I wouldn't mind it in blue instead of black although I do like the black but I managed to pick up something I really like I like demonstrators I've got all kinds of demonstrator pens some American made some Chinese made but look at that Schaefer snorkel in a demonstrator when I saw this I said you know what I'll jump at that. I'll go ahead and take it because I don't have one to add to my collection. They're not easy to come by. They're not extremely uh, plentiful in the marketplace. So, matter of fact, the seller did have one more that's got a needlepoint nib that costs a lot more than this one did. I didn't want a needlepoint nib. Uh, this one has a fine to medium nib, uh, so I went ahead and got it. But one of the th cool things, I mean, look. See how that clip is secured into that cap? You wouldn't see that except with a demonstrator. I kind of wish, instead of bl being black here, that it was clear, but that's pretty cool. It's got the Triumph nib, which I really like. I like Schaefer conical nibs a whole lot. Uh, then you've got uh, you know the black here, but look at this. You can see the mechanisms and how they work on a Schaefer snorkel. So, look. So let's look at that snorkel come out at the same time. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? I'm liking it. Uh, so, if you've ever played with a Schaefer snorkel, seen one uh, online, and you've wondered how they look, you can see you got the sack, then you got the cover over that sack, you know, that metal cover. And you can look at that, that helix and that screw on the inside. And then you get the slide out because you've got the touchdown style filling system. There are the seals on the end of that, the seals there, and listen. Here we go. You hear it aspirating? So we know that the touchdown system is working, we know that the snorkel is working. So let's go ahead and, and, and fill this one up, and let me see if I get some paper towel handy. Oh, I'm going to have to grab a new sheet of paper towel. I always keep some next to my desk. 
set that behind the camera. Get out some of my uh, Waterman Serenity Blue. Snorkel is extended. I'm going to put the snorkel down in the ink. The whole idea is that you don't have to get the, the nib down into the ink. That's uh, the whole idea behind the snorkel. So let's go ahead and see if I can get that just the snorkel in. You hear that? I heard it aspirate, right? I'm going to do it again, just so you can see again. And what it does is it uses air pressure from that little plunger to compress that sack rather than like a lever or a manual squeeze um, or a button. So that's what it does. It uses that air pressure from in the touchdown system uh, from this coming down to compress that sack and then it sucks in ink. So go ahead and retract the snorkel and we're in and look that nib really didn't even touch that ink. So let's go ahead do that, cap my ink, and let's see how my brand new Schaefer Triumph nib on my brand new Schaefer snorkel and from about circa 1954. You can see even that imprint is still there on that barrel. I realize it's kind of hard to see on the clear uh, plastic. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I'll put up some pictures here for you. So, uh, because the, the guy who sold this actually did a great job of photography. And I actually have uh, the pictures I was able to scavenge uh, from the listing. So I'll show you all those here in just a little bit. So this is my Schaefer snorkel and this is my demonstrator uh, 1954 circa 54 circa 1954 I don't expect anything really out of this nib it's a very rigid nib so you're not going to get any good line variation you're not going to get any flex out of it and you can even see it's got just a little bit of bend to it so it's going to be mighty rigid and it's going to write that way and it is more on the fine side it says it's a fine medium or a medium fine and it definitely definitely is on the uh, the fine side let me zoom in just a little bit more so and I put in some waterman Serenity Blue. I really like that Serenity Blue ink. It's a it's kind of a go-to ink for me. Just to give you an idea. Waterman Serenity Blue used to be called Waterman Florida Blue, which believe it or not was in my pen of the day today. My pen of the day actually is another Waterman, which is a Waterman Karen. And this is using an ink cartridge that's in it because it doesn't really like converters very well. And this has Florida Blue, which just means it's an older cartridge before the name change over to Serenity Blue. So you can see it's the same blue ink, uh, but actually was called Florida Blue on the cartridges for this just because they're older cartridges, but they still work just fine. So a bottle of Serenity Blue, Snorkel Demonstrator, 1954. I am absolutely loving this. I love a good demonstrator pen. I've got a lot of them. Maybe I'll take a picture of uh, some of the demonstrators I've got and throw them up here for you, you know, um, and uh, you can have an idea of the idea that, yeah, Troy definitely likes demonstrators. So anyway, that is my pen mail for today.